Hey there, this is the Max 7 tutorial number 33 pop up in the M4, meaning the multimodal music machine. Um, I just did a video about how to make a pop up window, but we're going to have much more fun trying to get it into the multimodal music machine because it's slightly more complicated. So we're going to have to start pulling up all our weird files here. So there we go. Here's the thing we were just working with. Um, in the last tutorial, and it was the themes, open, close, P control, you remember the whole thing. So what we want to do is unlock this and remove, and at least copy it. You can keep one of these around in case you forget how to do it, but I'm going to copy this one and close it. And then, no, I'm not going to just put it in my keyboard Johnny. I'm going to there we go, the multimodal music machine. Let's get that thing up again and make it big and go up to view and let's see our toolbars again because we love them so much. Okay, so if we were going to try to put this into our multimodal music machine, um, again, I am just sort of putting things in here in a way that um, is is good for tutorials. You're in charge of style, right? So you take care of that, but I will, in the meantime, uh, drop this thing in here. So I'm gonna I have it unlocked, and I'm just gonna drop it. Kaboom! There it is. Always make sure when you paste things into these that you don't mess up and click on them. Get them all at once. Right now they're all highlighted, so just click on one and drag it over here and we have the thing that we need to start working on our themes. Look, I've got my little themes thing over here and I can bring it uh, over here above the the top and that'll bring up a button. I guess we're probably going to want a U menu too because we're so fancy, but let's um, Let's start where, where we can actually do things. So um, within this patcher, um, when we click, let's lock it and see what happens when we get the themes here. We get this little thing popping up, and we, if we unlock this um, and take it out of presentation mode, remember that we started off sending things out to uh, to comments and to panels. So all we need is more of these receive objects for any comments or panels that we want. Well, <clears throat> that's a great start. So let's go ahead and copy these. Close this window for the time being. And then we just dig into our window here and we look around for the things that we might that might be comments. Now here, um, I'll zoom in a little bit. I usually make room for there to be like more than, whoops, more than, uh, um, more than one kind of comment. I'm just showing you this clip quick. So we've got this kind of comment here, and we've got this pitch bend here. So they could be comments one or two, comments one or comments two. I'm going to make them all the same just so um, it's slightly simpler to watch this video, but no need no need to keep it simple. The more complicated the better, right? Whoops, I locked the patcher. What I really wanted to do was say control V and somewhere, there they are. I love when it starts getting this complicated and you can't keep track of anything. So for our comments now, any place I have one of these receive comments from John, as you might recall, um, I can hook this onto a comment. So I'm just going to do that and go right over here to MIDI, Electronic, Sampler, Loop, and whoop. Now you'll notice as you're trying to get to the um, pitch bend that you can't click on it. And there's a reason for that. It's because, I'm going to just get rid of this while I explain it. 
by command clicking on it. Um, because that is inside of another patcher. Remember, this is a B patcher, and so it needs to have a receiving unit inside of it. We can do that two different ways, and I'll get to that in just a second. But first, and then there's a uh, the panel. I'm not, we don't have any panels here yet. Um, we'll use something else for that. How about um, U menu? I'm just going to change it to U menu, and then we'll go back and change the other one to U menu. This is U menu. One John, and I am going to connect that to this U menu over over here. Oh, except I can't. I'll connect it to... Hang on a second. I need my sidebars? My... I need my... Yeah, <clears throat> I, I recall now that I disabled, when we tried to make this all pretty, remember I came down and disabled the scroll bars. So making sure that you have nothing selected and that this P is up at the top which tells you that you're in your patcher inspector come down here and enable your horizontal scroll and uh, enable your vertical scroll and I think that should do it. Now we can we'll be able to move around in here which was kind of getting annoying. Okay. Oh yes, so much better. All right. Where the heck were we? Right. Um, we wanted to receive a U menu the same way we're going to receive a comment, and we'll run the U menus up to these U menus, which are not inside that uh, B patcher. So here we go. Holding down the shift bar and just clicking on the left inlet of each one of them. I'm sorry, this is such a mess, everyone but it'll all be worth it. All right, lock your patcher and let's check that this whole crazy thing works. We click on themes, we get this here, we change our panel to view menu, because that's what we had just done before. So we're now going to now that doesn't make any sense. I have to send to the U menu. Over here. Pay attention. John. U menu. Okay. So this thing's not going to receive anything for the time being, but it's okay. Oh, actually, it'll receive whatever we send to the U menu, even though it'll be going to the wrong thing. Okay. All well and good. So, um, in the last... Uh, tutorial. We had actually put some themes in here. Let's see if it actually affects them. Oh my goodness, it does. Look at that. We suddenly get um, MIDI electronic sampler in different colors, the loop in different colors, etc, etc. And these went to that other crazy color, and so we have... Woo! Uh, remember, our themes is down here, so it sort of gives you an idea of what they're doing there. So we know that if we send the background fill color to the U menu, and then, um, sorry, I think I skipped a little bit there, um, and we've got a bright pink here, which we had been sending to the panel, um, that's going to give us some jazzy U menus. Now, note that if you wanted to keep the text of your comments and your U menus the same, you can always take this um, text color and send it to the U menu. So let's unlock our patcher and just let's see if that works. Um, there's nothing saying that you can't use one color to do more than one thing. So now we got look at that. So the U menus are going to have a blue background the comments are going to have a yellow background but they both have this purpley blue color and so it sort of unifies the whole thing. So now, even though we still have that um, crazy pink uh, background, we've got the text, uh, the dark text for both of them, 
Now, it's interesting that uh, that color didn't change. Um, and there we go. And now we have uh, a different green for our U menus and a different green for our comment boxes. But the letters are all that um, sort of lighter greenish lime color. So knowing this, um, you can put a receive object anywhere that can receive um, that has the same name as a send object. So you could put 10 of these things here sending out to all different things. But the question is, how do you know what to what to prepend your message with? And I think that's one of the things we're going to have to talk about right away. And one of the most complicated things, um, let's just well, let's make a let's make a new one of these first by unlocking our patcher and just copying this and moving it over. So we'll just get ready. Okay? And we're gonna want this one also to be connected to the um, what's it called? Preset. Okay, so we'll leave that alone for a second and we'll come over here to our patcher and we will click on um, we will click on the what is it called matrix control the dial matrix control now this might actually be a tricky thing because when we unlock it um, you may remember that there's a slider over the top of it so we have to move the slider off the top of it so that we can click on it no, we don't have to move it too far we just have to move it some and now we have the dial uh, matrix control highlight. And let's get our, um, you know, for those of you who get annoyed by this as much as I do, you can actually get all of this sque squeezed into the window by doing, by clicking on these two arrows down here so that you get this setting, uh, this bar up here. And then you can grab these and drag them sideways. Drives me absolutely crazy. Um, so then you can actually see them. But what we really want is the um, the uh, reference. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. They both have the same thing in there. The reference, you can get the color as well. So on this matrix control, we have background color, we have element color, and we have color. So one of those three, um, three words you can use to prepend what you're sending to the, um, to the matrix control. Color, element color, and background color. So let's just go and give it a try in our other patcher and see what happens. It's like Dora the Explorer trying to remember these things. Color element color and oh wait we forgot to do something we need a receive object for the matrix control so I'm going to remove this out of the way and I'm gonna make I'm just gonna copy this as I often do receive matrix uh, CTL something you can remember John because I like it to be specific and let's run that right over to its input and then we'll copy this so that I can't make a mistake when we go in the other patcher copy and let's go back to that other patcher and paste it in there there it is and we'll just make this a send object. Oops, I went right off the thing there. So substitute an S for that R. So now we've got send to the matrix control and well, we can get rid of that one. But we can't send background fill color um, all of you who are great at Dora the Explorer, can you remember what it is that we can send to it? It's color, 
we can send a color. So let's make this color. And I believe the other one is element color. And you might find, so, okay, so I'm locking that, and now let's just see if it worked. Oh, look at that. So now we have our color when they're lit up. So we're going to want that to be a nice bright color. I'm glad we picked that one. Now, for our not as interesting color, maybe we could use a background color from here or something if we wanted to keep it all together. But I'm, I'm just sort of showing you a trick of how to... Um, uh, sort of coordinate your colors. So if this is a background fill color for the, oh, what are we using it for? For the U menus, do we want this to be the same color? Maybe. Um, oh, it was color, element color. I can't really remember. Well, my point's just this. If we, if we put another prepend in here, let's just type n prepend element color. Okay. We can still send that out through the matrix control. It will prepend it element color, and let's just use the background fill color to see what happens. Okay. So now when we change, I oh, have to lock my patcher here, so now when we change this one you see the background of the U menus and the background color of the of the matrix control changing together and when we change this one we see just that highlight color change and that's a the special color because it only goes through that one so and um, so we actually have our colors kind of um, kind of looped together here, not looped together, but cross-tied, so that when we have our themes working, ooh, of course our, uh, our last one doesn't have any presets yet. So we could come up with, if, if we wanted to add to this one and say, oh, well, what goes well with that color scheme? Uh, I honestly don't think red does, but uh, I did kind of like the bright yellow, so I'm going to go with that. Let's go with bright yellow, and then you shift click on one, and then we go to two, and I don't think the yellow's, well, the yellow's still pretty good there, but let's change it anyway to something cooler. Oh, yeah, sure. Or hot pink? I don't know. Prevaricating. There we go. Shift click on that. And we'll do something backwards on the next one. There we go. So now we'll make it a, a dark green. Oh, no, that doesn't really show up very well. That's kind of nice. It doesn't have that punch that I would like it to have, but hmm, I kind of like that weird orange. There we go. Okay. And then we'll shift click on three there. And I think three is all we have. So that's how to insert this into, into the regular parts of your, of your patcher. These are the parts that are not the B patcher, okay? Now for the B patcher, we can we can do a couple different things. We can either open up the B patcher and uh, run it in that way, and uh, um, we'll just call it up right now. So, um, but we do want to save this thing. Good, it is saved, and so let's go. Open up your keyboard patcher, which for me is Keyboard Johnny. There it is. Do I have two Keyboard Johnnies open, really? Uh, just checking. No, just one. Okay, good. So <clears throat> you're going to want to unlock your patcher, uh, Command-E or however you like to do it, and also take it out of presentation mode. 
and oh, very funny. So I was trying a different way here, a different thing to do. We'll get back to that later. I'm going to just delete those. So you could put in the same receives that you have here. So if we're receiving, if we're receiving um, comments over here, we have our receive comment and receive you menu. Let's copy those, go back to Keyboard Johnny and paste them. And I'm going to drag them down here, though they probably work just as well up there. So now we can hook this to all of our comments here, like volume. I'm holding the uh, shift key down now, keyboard and pitch bend. And then we'll connect this one to the U menus. And I haven't connected it to this button because I'm not sure. I don't think button uses the same names as uh, as the U menus do. But let's go ahead and see how this functions now. I can go ahead and save uh, Keyboard Johnny and go back to, well, hopefully it'll work in all the patchers now. Um, where is that? There it is. So let's try our other theme. Okay, so all these lit up in Keyboard Johnny, but did they light up in this one? Yes, they did. So we can send things even though we have a B patcher here. We can send things to them when the B patcher has it open and change the colors in there as well. So let's just take on the most um, interesting object that's in there. We, we took on the interesting matrix control up here and uh, sent it some interesting stuff. Let's make another one of these uh, swatches. And I, as I always do, I just keep stealing and stealing and stealing. Um, and I'm not sure where we're going to hook them, but we'll see in a few minutes. So these, we're going to prepare to send to the, um, we'll just call it the keyboard, keyboard John. Okay, or keyboard, whatever your name is. Okay, and um, we'll leave those alone for a minute. Let's go back to not that one. Not this is the one you want right here. So we've put these receives in here to go to these other devices, and now we're going to put another receive in here. Uh, we can just, am I locked or unlocked here? Come on. There we go. We can just copy this one and make this a keyboard John as we board John. And then um, and we will connect this over to the top of this keyboard. But our real question while we're here is what words will we use to prepend the message, the color message, so that the right thing changes colors. So let's highlight the keyboard, and we see over here we have the white key color, the selected key color, the black key color, and the active key color. Um, so we can use any of these. So if we wanted to change white key color, we just have to remember that it's going to be white key color. So um, that's almost all we have to do there. We've got this little uh, receiver here. Let's go back to here and type in prepend. Oh, come on. Oh, it's locked. Sorry. Prepend. 
everything is in the way. There we go. White, whoops, white key color, and then we're going to make sure that one's connected. And then we might want to make this one say prepend um, black key color. But if that's correct, we certainly don't want it to be the same as the white key color color, or we won't be able to see any of the keys. So let's just randomly associate this with another color. Of course, you don't have to do this. How's this? For whatever text color it is, so will be our black key color. And now, just to make absolutely sure that we have this connected, a good trick to do is to double click on this and see if you get a receive object, and we did on Keyboard Johnny. And now we're going to look at it. There's Keyboard Johnny, and then just black key color, black key color. We wrote it correctly. So let's go back and see what happens. Um, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to make this one a little smaller. I know that's, oops, I mean smaller, smaller like that. That way we can control it while we're still looking at our keyboard. And uh, let's see what happens. So uh, it's locked, and here's one. Woo! Here's two, three. Now notice there's no change in the white key color yet, and that's because we haven't associated it with anything. So let's go back to um, theme one, and we have these bright blue keys. Oh, that's so nice. Um, and we'll make the keys, let's just say, well, that was a kind of blue themed thing, right? So why don't we make them light blue? Nice. And then we'll shift click there. And then we'll go to the next theme, theme two. Keys are black. Maybe since, why don't we uh, have something, um, you know, old-fashioned like white keys here. So we'll make them white and shift click on two. Then we'll go to three. Ooh, the black keys are lime green. So let's make the white keys uh, lime black. There we go. Just for some excitement. And we'll shift click on that. And uh, was there a fourth? I can't even remember now. No. Okay, there. We've got our th three themes now. And that's changing this. All right. So this is just moving right along. I think you can see now how using a sort of combination of different prepend words and sending them to different places. They don't always have to go through the same send element. You can get a whole bunch of different ways to control the colors of your of your masterpiece, of your multimodal music machine. Now, finally, I do want to tell you just, oh, uh, just one thing, and that is you won't be able to um, get the gradient colors on the panels. As soon as you change them, the gra it, there's no more gradient. I'm sorry to tell you that, but that's the way it goes. And one other thing that we have to do, I almost forgot about before we're done here, is to put the U menu in that has the colors that we want there. So remembering that we have one inlet here that's going to go to the presets, we can just uh, close our color themes and we can come over, we could either put it in our keyboard here or we could put it on the music machine. That would be up to you. I think Keyboard Johnny is pretty good the way it is. So I'm just going to close it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to go over to my music machine because yeah, I'm going to put it up here with themes here. So we got this. We're going to unlock it. Let's put a U menu in there, N, U menu, 
and we get a U menu. We, before we drag it over there, I almost can't remember where it's connected to now. It was this little machine over here. So we have a, a box to get the themes open, but if we just want to select them, that's all we want here. So we'll want this output, the output of this U menu, to come down to the patcher color theme, like so. Okay, now we're going to uh, drag it over here so that we're not worried about how much room we have there because we need that to look at the inspector. Oops, let's put it all the way over here. That's what those arrow keys are good for. Okay, and now we select it. We get some inspector over here, and we edit the names of our menu items. Go right into your menu items. See it? Empty, not very interesting, and we'll call them, uh, I can't remember what they look like now. The last one was green. The first one was, uh, oh, let's just call it um, moody. And then uh, old-fashioned, old-fashioned, an old-fashioned, it's sounding good, and then uh, tree hugger. There we go. So now we've got uh, three different uh, themes for our colors. I'm going to push OK there. They come right up. Oh, there is one, even one more thing we have to do because I know it's not going to work. So come over here and, well, you could also do it inside the patcher, the patcher, uh, the color theme patcher. My belief is that we need to add one to it. So double click on, whoops, there is another way to do this, of course, which is just to tell it to open. Open. Okay. We need to add one to this as it's coming in because the U menu puts out a zero for the first selection. When you, If we would put Moody in there, it would send out a zero, and we want, need it to send out a one to the preset object. So here we go. Um, Unlock this patcher, type an N, type plus one, and get it in there in between that inlet and the preset. Sorry, this is so little. There we go. Okay, and let's put that away and see how it works. Are we in a moody mood here? Is it locked? It is. Let's take a look. Moody. Woo! Old-fashioned. Lots of reds and pinks. And tree hugger. All right. So now, of course, you can see that I've only made it change a certain number of these things. It's up to you how to connect them. But on each one, just remember, all you have to do is find the, the words that are associated with the colors and use them to prepend the color that's being sent to it. That's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this one. How to colorize your fantastic machines. That's all for today. Patch well. And of course we should just go out with a little bit of a number so we can enjoy ourselves. Okay, people, take care.